Hey everybody, welcome back. In the last video I successfully fit that lithium battery inside my case. We spent a lot of time talking about the wiring schematic and how some changes need to be made in order to accommodate that new lithium battery. During this video, we'll revisit the schematic. I'll talk about some important changes I had to make on the fly to accommodate a very new but important feature. And finally, we'll make sure that this system is working properly again. Well, I've successfully been able to rewire this system and ensure that everything is working properly. I'm going to take you through some of the high points. And first off, I'd like to apologize because uh, this work is not necessarily as neat as I would have liked, but do, do keep in mind this is a retrofit, and I tried to make as much use of the existing uh, wiring from my first version as possible. And uh, things didn't work out exactly as I had hoped for, but it's functional. It's just not the neatest job I would have hoped for. This wiring configuration will make a lot more sense when I take a look with you at the updated wiring schematic, but uh, this is the main negative bus bar tucked in here is the main positive bus bar that is new. This load bus bar is one that was previously in use before we reconfigured to include the lithium battery. Of course, this is new. That is the 150 amp uh, circuit breaker, which actually effectively serves as the main battery cutoff. So simply by depressing the button on that 150 amp breaker, we can shut down power to the entire system. What is new and wasn't discussed in my last uh, review of the schematic is this shunt. I decided that I was going to include a new feature, a uh, amp meter uh, for the sake of being able to measure power in and power out of the system. Uh, that's absolutely critical when you're working with lithium batteries and I'll discuss that more when we review the schematic, but uh, we used a very short jumper here to connect from the 150 amp breaker uh, to the shunt. That shunt then continues on to my main negative, and the main negative is connected to my load terminal, uh, that bulk terminal on the front of the case. The uh, counterpart to that, of course, is a um, cable that connects the bulkhead positive terminal on the external of the case to this positive connection on the battery. Uh, some other things to point out on the inside of the case that were a little bit different as far as the wiring is concerned. I did have to relocate my ANL uh, 50 amp fuse down into the bottom of the case. You can see it on top of that foam uh, and that is again connected to the uh, main positive and negative terminals and that serves the uh, 400 amp uh, pure sine wave inverter. The other thing I did was reorient this thermal sensor. It is set to turn on at a set temperature point and then turn off when the case cools back down. I've reoriented that and attached it a little bit differently inside of the case. Uh, but again, the main features are the addition of the new positive and negative bus bars, uh, the addition of that 150 amp breaker, and the addition of the, the shunt uh, that we'll talk about more in terms of the features of the entire system in just a bit. So this is a good place for us to pause and revisit the wiring schematic, and I can talk to you about some changes I made both in the actual configuration of the wiring and how it uh, displays on my updated wiring schematic. What you're seeing is the original wiring schematic that I used to plan out this redesign to incorporate the lithium iron phosphate battery. And the first thing I want to point out is you'll see a change when we move ahead to the next slide and you'll see the battery will be reversed. Uh, the most positive terminal will be on this side of the battery. The most negative terminal will also be on this side of the battery that is facing toward what I call the back of my solar generator case. Uh, you'll also see the bus bars switch likewise uh, to again reflect the reorientation of that battery. You'll also note that the connections to the BMS, of course, will then uh, be made on this side. And to be very clear, uh, as I planned this out, it was really kind of difficult to know exactly where all the components would be located. The BMS in actuality is located over here, but as you can see, uh, very tight space to make all of the connections clear to all of you who have an interest. So the wiring uh, will work, but you may have to, for your own purposes, consider where you want to locate your BMS. But again, the BMS is truly not located here on this side of the battery. It's over here. Wiring will all be consistent. So let's uh, jump ahead and we'll take a look at the updated wiring schematic. You will notice uh, there are some changes in, um, in a couple of different places that are significant. Here's the updated schematic. As I've mentioned, you can see now the most positive terminal and the most 
negative terminal are at this side of the battery pack. The connection for the B negative to the BMS is made here, and you'll see the um, power out, uh, which is again negative, heading toward this 150 amp breaker runs alongside uh, the BMS in this schematic. If you're really paying attention, you'll take note that there is a new feature, and that is a shunt that I have installed. I have to tell you, I was really disappointed in the ISDT back go battery monitor. It was clear that the state of charge indication it provided in terms of percent the battery was charged or discharged was not reliable. I also found through my initial experimentation that the 20 amp MPPT solar charge controller also was not able to give an accurate indication of the battery state of charge. If you're going to rely exclusively on the voltage of your battery, if you're using lithium, uh, you're going to be disappointed. It's very, very difficult to assess battery state of charge using only uh, the voltage indications. So neither the MPP solar charge controller uh, or that ISDT back go monitor were of help to really know where my battery stood. So you'll see in just a bit what has been added to um, account for that so I can uh, do just that. Account for very specifically charge in and amperage drawn out in terms of uh, amps. You'll see that there's a new device that's being installed and it did require a shunt. This is not something that is novel. If you've done any research, you know that this is uh, pretty common, not only for lithium systems, but uh, for all systems that uh, folks have developed. But it is absolutely critical to get a good meter that can measure amps in and amps out and account for your total capacity of your uh, lithium uh, iron phosphate batteries if that's what you're deciding to use. So you'll see that the shunt has been added and I did reorganize such that all the power from the battery flows through the 150 amp breaker, which is nice because it does serve as a master battery switch. That is the main battery cutoff. If I uh, simply push the button on that 150 amp breaker, it cuts off all power to the system passes through the shunt and then um, connects to my uh, main negative bus bar. And then you'll see uh, that the negative bus bar distributes uh, power again to various features and certainly including these external terminals, the bulkhead terminal and the bulkhead post on the negative side. Uh, the counterpart to that again is over here. Here's the positive bulkhead uh, terminal and post. Uh, that heavy duty post and it connects directly to the most positive terminal on the battery. So to point out again, what is new? The shunt, the relocation in this wiring series of the, um, the main negative uh, bus bar. The other thing that I had to do was reconsider how I was wiring this switch which turned on and off the solar charge controller and then something very simple involved the, the wiring of the AC charger input. This is for the battery charger to connect with an SAE connection uh, and to, to charge the battery that way if you chose to do that versus using solar power. So you can see on this slide, it's a side-by-side -side comparison. On the left is my initial schematic for this portion of uh, the build, and over here is the update. Again, you see circled the new shunt. Uh, you see the uh, reorganization and placement in the sequence of wiring this negative, uh, main negative bus bar. And then you see up here some rewiring I did to take into account the needs of the switch that turns on and off the uh, solar charge controller. Very simply, the battery negative out goes into this switch and it is joined by a wire that takes uh, that negative connection directly down to the main negative bus bar. Uh, the positives didn't change. The positive comes in from uh, the battery connection and then uh, out through a 20 amp fuse and connects over here to the uh, main positive bus bar that is new. This SAE in uh, port is used to connect a, uh, a battery charger to, um, to charge the battery and it simply has a direct negative connection to the main negative bus bar and a direct positive connection through uh, an appropriately sized fuse to the main positive bus bar. So that is the, the essence of the changes to the, uh, the schematic, but the most important change was the addition of this shunt and the addition of a meter that's going to allow me to very, very um, carefully and accurately track 
power coming into the system in terms of amps and power going out of the system and uh, when compared against the battery's total capacity that will give me a very clear and accurate indication of how much power is left in the battery uh, as opposed to making a, uh, a relatively good guess because that's all it would be if you're going to use the voltage of your battery specifically if it's lithium iron phosphate. With the top deck replaced uh, not much has really changed but what you will notice is I've been able to uh, find a space for this ISDT backgo monitor which monitors the individual cells of that new lithium battery. Uh, it's a convenient location there. The wiring for that simply passes up through the grommet that was uh, previously installed there uh, to allow this AC uh, connection to the uh, 400 watt pure sine wave inverter. You'll notice there's another wire that's also passing through that same grommet and that allows for a connection between the shunt uh, and the meter that will be uh, shown to you in just a bit that's located on the top of the case that is so critical for accurately monitoring the state of charge of this new lithium battery. With the lid back on the case you'll notice there's a new addition that is the 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. I have decided to attach this to the top of the case so uh, in my use case I know this is going to be out of the elements I know it'll be in use in the cabin uh, in my boat so I'm not worried at this point about uh, using this as a weatherproof or weather resistant system so I had to make some trade-offs but you can see those cables that come from the inverter that attach to the bulkhead terminals positive and negative here on the front of the case. What you will notice is that there is an additional meter now and that is an Ailey um, battery indicator. It is very specifically able to monitor the amps in and amps out of the lithium battery. It's connected to the shunt and all of the power that is moving to or from the battery is being metered uh, by this this battery monitor. The only power that would be drawn from the system that would not be monitored by that shunt is any load that is coming from the solar charge controller directly to my um, to my load bus bars. Uh, so what the hope is is that when the sun is shining if the batteries are topped off that the solar charge controller would simply deliver that power to something like my refrigerator that might be running throughout the day. I really like this new meter uh, it shows the state of charge expressed as a percent of the total state of charge of the batteries. It does have to be calibrated. So for example, uh, it's showing me right now, based on having topped off the batteries and added the total capacity, in this case 280 amp hours, that I'm at 226 amp hours, which again expressed as a percentage is 80.9%. It will also show you how many amps are being drawn from the system. Right now, uh, the only amps that are being drawn is at 0.111 at this point, uh, would be for the lights that are indicated as on on the front of the case right now, and then the meter itself. Of course, this meter will indicate voltage as well, but it is not reliable to use voltage to determine your state of charge for lithium batteries. So. Uh, looking at the state of charge expressed as the percentage and certainly the amount of amp hours that remains is much desirable and this new battery monitor will allow you to do just that. It's located here at the end of the case for a very specific reason based on our very specific use on our boat and I'll show you that perhaps in a couple of weeks as far as why we located this particular monitor in this very specific location. I've just plugged in this battery charger and it's a 5 amp battery charger that's appropriate for uh, charging lithium batteries just as a demonstration to show what can be monitored using this new battery indicator. Uh, you'll see it's flashing and that indicates that now power is going into it. You may be able to make it out but there is a um, arrow up positive sign that indicates that the battery is charging and it's demonstrating that it is in charge mode and that it's uh, currently charging at 5 amp hours. If I turn on this large inverter it starts to draw power in simply standby mode and you'll quickly notice that while the battery is still being charged that it's dropped from a rate of 4 amps per hour sorry 5 amps per hour to 4 amps per hour because this in standby mode draws 1 amp. If I further take a, a draw from the battery using this small portable space heater and let's turn this on that's just simply the fan and then we'll put it on low 
and go back to the meter, what you'll see is that very quickly the meter indicates that there is a draw as opposed to an increase in amperage going to the battery. So that arrow is flipped upside down showing a negative. And very quickly right now I can see that we are drawing uh, 43 and increasing 43 amps from the system. Uh, again, you can switch this. It will show the percentage draw down as the battery is being exhausted by use of that um, space heater. You can also show the number of amp hours that remain. So if we're to leave this space heater on and it's going to draw about 75 amps per hour, uh, we would see very quickly that this meter would indicate how many amps would uh, be taken from the system while that space heater is on. So uh, in the time we've been watching, it's gone from 226, it's down to 225.9, 225.8 and dropping. And that type of meter is absolutely critical so that you can assess the accurate state of charge of your lithium batteries at any point in time. So at this point, the system has been rewired following the installation of the lithium battery. That is the end of my build. Uh, it's been successful. I've tested all aspects of this system. Everything is working properly. Uh, I have not attached any solar panels to it yet, but that's coming up in the next video uh, in hopes the weather's going to continue to improve and this will be uh, put on my boat and installed uh, where it's going to sit and we'll have those solar panels attached and do one more test but uh, I'm quite confident already that the uh, the system is working properly following the rewiring uh, that was necessary to accommodate the, the lithium battery installation. I'd like to thank everybody for your continued interest, your comments, your questions, your suggestions. I really enjoyed upgrading this system. I've enjoyed taking you along the way. If you have interest in any of the products I've used, particularly that new battery monitor, take a look below. I'll provide a link. I'll also soon provide a link to the updated process by which I top balance my batteries. And of course, I'll give you the schematic that I've updated as well. Thanks again, everybody. We hope to see you back here soon.